It's the same words, but it's a different melody. Different melody. Uh, Look, it goes. Yep. Check. Mike, check. Shoot, not need to look at announcements. <laughs> we get those right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Announcements. All right. Jordan's going to turn it over to turn it over to Todd.
go to more right here and you go to events and our event should come up it says 8 30 but this is good for both 8 30 and 10 you click on that and there's our program so once you're there just scroll through it's going to tell you um, a quick welcome back first time guests we're going to have you hit right there that's going to take you to our connection card we'd love to hear from you uh, we've got our verses here we've got our online worship service and how to find it here's how to give right there and then also hit on this announcements that's going to be important for you because that's good morning good morning Woohoo! There, go. there we are how are we doing this morning yes finally out of a little bit of lockdown oh my goodness i personally have been enjoying the beach so i gotta get one with nature i guess so um, let's go before the lord in prayer lord we just thank you father for this day thank you for your presence lord thank you for your new mercies this morning lord thank you for this this family that's gathered together, Lord. Lord, we love you. We cherish you. We focus solely on you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the cross and thank you for dying for our sins and renewing us again, once again this morning. Lord, I pray that your presence would be here, Lord, that you'd speak through Pastor Don. Lord, that you would minister to our lives in a real way. In your name we pray. Amen. Never going to stop singing. You can stand with us.
Amen. Give God praise. Amen. Woo. Good morning, everybody. We're so glad to be back in the house. It is amazing just to be with people. <laughs> I'm a people person. I don't know about you, but it feels amazing just to be in we, the we building. We had props set up for a while. <laughs> He kids, he kids. All right, so welcome back. Um, so you, oh, hold on, hold on. Do we have a video? Okay, let me let you see that first. Good morning, I'm Barb, and I want to give you just a quick tutorial on how to find our program. We have the YouVersion Bible app on our, uh, on our smartphones. If you don't have it, you can download it or you can go to their website. We have a QR code for you to use right outside the door there. But let me show you what to do once you're here. So open your Bible app, and then after it's open, you go to More right here, and you go to Events. And our event should come up. It says 8.30, but this is good for both 8.30 and 10. You click on that, and there's our program. So once you're there, just scroll through. It's going to tell you um, a quick welcome back. First time guests, we're going to have you hit right there. That's going to take you to our connection card. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we've got our verses here. We've got our online worship service and how to find it. Here's how to give right there. And then also hit on this announcements. That's going to be important for you because that's going to tell you all the announcements we have for you. And if you want to contact us, you just hit right there. So easy peasy. All right, so um, like she said, our program is now on the YouVersion Bible app. So if you don't have that, you can download that um, to your phone. Uh, you may have noticed when you came in that we're not distributing the programs any longer. So instead of that program, uh, including the announcements, it's all on your YouVersion Bible app. So if you already have the app, you can go there uh, to the events. So if you, there's a little menu, you can open that up and click on events and you can find our service there. Uh, if you don't have the app, you can find the program um, by using the QR code uh, that was on your way into the worship area. So you just have to use a QR scanner on your phone. Um, if that's a little bit overwhelming, don't panic. Um, <laughs> um, the people at our welcome desk or Miss Barb or, or Pastor Don or any of us that are walking around here that look like we might have a clue, we will help. <laughs> okay. stay, stay six feet away, though. Yes, yeah, six, well, six feet away, help you. All right, so if you're a first-time guest, we'd love to give you some information about our church and a free gift. Um, fill out as much as you feel comfortable with online on the connection card. When you go to the events page, there is a little link there, and you would click that to fill in any information that you're comfortable with. Um, once the service is ended, you're welcome to come back to the welcome table here and get a free gift from us. Um, a slight change to our typical service uh, will not be passing an offering basket at the end of service. Instead, you can drop the offering in the new offering box located right there on the, above the door on your way out. It's that nice, pretty blue box. Um, check in on Facebook. All of you guys still watching online, Hope Community will um, donate $1 to House of Hope in Wildwood for every check-in. Uh, their mission is to provide a nonprofit, comprehensive 12-month faith-based residential program to help men break the chains of addiction and enable them to return to their families as sons, fathers, husbands, and brothers God created them to be. Um, next week, uh, Hope Community Church will honor our seniors, Terry Davis and Wes Young, uh, at the 10 a.m. service. <laughs> uh, we are meeting online for connection groups, ladies' Bible studies, and prayer group. He's also like known as Ninja West. <laughs> All, right. All of those groups are still meeting online. If you want more information on that or you would like to join our email up, to keep updated with announcements, um, just let us know and we'll be glad to add you to those. Um, our youth group is meeting on Wednesday nights here in the building again at 6 p.m. Um, social distancing, you know, trying to stay safe, but trying to still gather. So um, we hope you find the service relevant. Um, oh, one more thing. At the end of our service this morning, in order for our cleaning crew to do their job between the two services, we're going to um, 
we would appreciate if you would vacate the building right after the service. It's so awkward, guys. Uh, we don't want you to get sprayed. <laughs> They're going to be wiping everything down. Um, if you want to visit with your friends, please do so outside, just kind of away from the front door. Um, and we'll just, um, we'll just do our meeting out there. Thank goodness we live in Florida. It's always sunny. So we're good to go. <laughs> All right. Enjoy the service with us. Thank you, Jamie. Uh -huh. Let's continue to worship. love you. We thank you so much, Lord, for revealing to us your mercies, your love.
that's all we need in our lives. We need more and more of Him in our lives. Less of this world. have your way in the service today. You're truly all we need. God, I pray that your word, God, would be delivered, God, in a way that all of us would be changed, God, that we would not leave this building in the same way that we walked in. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would move in this place today, God. God, that whatever it is that's on our hearts, God, every need that walked through those doors, God, you knew that need before we came today. God, have your way in this service. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, good morning. It's good to see you guys here. I've been doing this lately, but staring at a camera right there. Uh, so, so this is great. So we're in the middle of a sermon series called Stuff Happens, Now What? And I, I think we can all agree. We've kind of figured this out in the last two months, right? Stuff happens. <laughs> and then what, what do we do? And, and the world has changed. The, the world is different. There's people looking at me wearing masks right now. The, the, the world has changed. But here's something I, I believe with all my heart, that God is using this change to change you and I, right? If, in my notes, that's in capital letters, it's bold. If, if we just allow him, right? We need to work with God on this change that he wants to do in us. And the theme of, of this series comes from a passage uh, that Paul wrote to some Christians li living in a city called Colossae. And he, he wanted to remind them, he wanted to encourage them on a road to growing in maturity. God loves you just as you are, but he loves you too much to keep you where you are. He wants you to mature. He doesn't want the world's events and the challenges that we're facing to bog us down and to discourage us. He wants to have faith that Jesus has authority over all things, even evil. So let's, let's look at our key passage. Our key passage is in Colossians. Colossians 3, 12 through 14, and it should appear on the screen there or on your phone or in that paper, paper Bible that you got there. That's good. You don't, I don't see those too often. <laughs> Colossians 3, beginning at verse 12, it says, Put on then as God's chosen ones, because of who you are. This is what he wants you to put on. Um, holy ones that are, that are holy and beloved. It says, put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. You must, you also must forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So, so in this letter, uh, Paul's reminding the Colossians of, of who they are, the riches that they have in Jesus Christ, and then this reality that they have been transferred out of a kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And early on in this chapter, um, Paul tells the readers to, to focus on this kingdom. When, when you see everything that's going on, you need to look at this kingdom, the, the, the kingdom of light. And, and, and when you do that, you're to put off the old way of living. The, the old kingdom principles and put on these new kingdom principles. You're to live differently. Um, now, imagine with me for a moment. Um, maybe some of you don't have to imagine this, but imagine you spent several years in prison, all right? And as a prisoner, you have now been released. And when you're released, you have this understanding that, that your debt has been paid and you are now free. In addition... You get to take off that old orange jumpsuit, you know, the, the shoes that they give you and, and all that, and you turn that in because those things represented who you were, what your life was about, and that's no longer who you are, and you get to wear new clothes and go out and live a new life. Now, could you imagine if after all that happened, you were released, and a few days later, you're walking around wearing prison garb? and walking around as, as if uh, you had not been set free. If you saw that in somebody, you'd say, that, that person doesn't realize who they are. They don't realize the change that has transpired in their lives. And Paul doesn't want us to live as prisoners or slaves to sin. He wants us to live as people that have been set free from the rule and the reign of the kingdom of darkness. And he wants us to now put on the, the clothes of Christ, the clothes of righteousness, and to walk in those. And I, and I want to remind us that this isn't a one-time thing that, that I just, you know, oh yeah, I, I, I put on humility yesterday. Um, most of you, you get dressed every day, right? 
Most of you do that. Maybe some, sometime in the last couple of months you didn't do that. But, but just as you get dressed each day physically, we need to get dressed each day spiritually. We, we, we need to take off the old and put on the new. And I want us to think of this as a journey, not a destination. Because if you come up to me and tell me, hey, you know, I'm going through this and I've arrived at humility. Do you know where you haven't arrived? <laughs> you haven't arrived at humility. And, and maturity, it, it takes time. I, I know plenty of immature Christians that are 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. And, and so, so it's not just a matter of time, but it's a conscious choice of each day I get up and, and, and I'm going to clothe myself in Christ. I'm going to clothe myself in the things that he says to be clothed in. And so today, we're, we're going to look at meekness. And, and what does it mean that, that God wants me, God wants you to mature in meekness? And, uh, and I'll just be honest. I look at meekness, and my first instinct, uh, maybe it's because I'm a guy, I, I don't know. I don't want to be known as meek. You know, I, I read that and I think, just give me my prison guard back. You know, the, the meek don't survive in the world that, that I know. And, and, and I hear that word and I think of wimpy, I think of weak. And um, it makes sense how our current uh, world defines it. Uh, here, here's what dictionary.com says about meek or meekness. It's docile, overly compliant, spiritless, yielding, or tame. Uh, Webster defines it this way, mild, deficient in courage, submissive, and weak. No wonder I don't want to be those things. And I hear those definitions, and it sounds like a person that cowers um, in the midst of a challenge, any, any kind of challenge, and, and I don't think we want to be that way. Um, however, I, I don't think these modern-day definitions do justice to the biblical meaning of of meekness and the connotation. When you look at it in the Bible and, and you dive in, you're going to see it uh, with words like righteous and humble, teachable, patient, patience under, under long suffering being described on, what it, on the idea of what it means to be meek. I like that defi definition a whole lot better. But when I look at that definition, I have to ask the question, and maybe you want to ask yourself this, how patient have you been, how teachable have you been in the last two months? Now, let me remind you, it's a journey. <laughs> we are on a journey. You don't have to stay where you are. But, but there's an incredible lack of biblical meekness in our world. It's an incredible lack of biblical meekness um, in, in, in churches. And, and I would go as far to say that I think this is one of the most uh, compelling attitudes that, that we can have in order to share the gospel. Um, and, and, and to not show meekness, we walk around like the rest of the world. And, and you know what the rest of the world's walking around? They're walking around in orange jumpsuit, jumpsuits, okay? We don't want to be like the rest of the world. Let me give you a working definition of meekness for our conversation today. You might want to write this one down. Um, meekness is controlled strength in the midst of uncontrollable circumstances. Controlled strength in the midst of uncontrollable circumstances. Kind of defines our time in, in many different ways. Uh, so meekness doesn't, doesn't identify the weak, but more precisely... It, it, it identifies the strong who have been placed in a position of seemingly weakness where they persevere against difficult circumstances. And they persevere without giving up. And one of the things I want us to recognize is that this isn't all too common. People give up. People give up on, on their jobs, on, on relationships, and, and church. Um, and, instead of finishing well, we, we, we give up. You know, we say, hey, this isn't meeting my needs. This, this isn't, you know, every, everything I, I want. And so we, so we just move on and, and, and instead of trying to, to strive through that. Um, let's, let's choose something different. 
Let's choose something different than, than falling into the way the rest of the world deals, deals with things like frustration, bitterness, anger. Anybody dealt with any frustrations? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so those are going to come, but how do we deal with them differently? How do we deal? How do we not deal with them with an old way, with that old prison garb and dress differently? And, and the reality is, my character, your character, is always tested um, during challenging times. It, it's always going to be tested. Kind of like that tea bag. You pour some hot water on it, you find out what's, what's on the inside. And sometimes you don't like what's on the inside, but like I said, this is a journey. You can make conscious choices to change, to put on Christ today. Um, and so meekness is, is an active, it is a deliberate acceptance of undesirable circumstances that are wisely seen by a person as only part of a larger picture. Think about Christ going to the cross. Undesirable circumstance, would, could we, we could agree with that, right? That's an undesirable circumstances. But he saw that in the light of a larger picture. So meekness is not resigning to fate. It's, it's not passive reluctance or submission to sub circumstances. It is controlled strength. person with the most power in, in the universe exercise controlled strength in the midst of uncontrollable circumstances. Um, the word that we translate as meekness in the Bible often gets applied to, to animals. In, in fact, um, the, the, the meaning when it's applied to an animal is tame. Um, and, and, and think about that. Uh, you, you got a picture there for me? Yeah. Does anybody doubt the strength of, of, that, uh, of the lion in that picture? He's not weak, right? And, uh, no, nobody in here wants to test whether or not he's, he's weak. He's, he, is, he is not weak. Yeah. He's in control right there, and, and the lamb really appreciates that. Uh, so so he, he, has not, he has not lost his strength, but he has learned to control his natural, um, his natural instincts. And sometimes our natural instincts can be quite destructive, and, 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 and it causes disharmony um, among one, one another. So God's not asking you to give up your strength. He's asking you to, to control that, to come under his authority. Let me, let me give you a, a description of, of what uh, meekness looks like from uh, Psalm 37, 5 through 8. Uh, this describes a meek person. I'll, I'll give you four points, uh, and, and then we'll close. Uh, Psalm 37, 5 through 8 says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently before him. Fret not over those who prosper in his way, over the man who carries out evil desires. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. All right. That usually happens when I make a point. Um, so so let, let, let's walk through. There, there, there's four things here on identifying uh, this meek person. Number one, the meek trust God. The meek trust God. They begin their day and they end their day by trusting God. They believe that God is working and will continue to work. There's a belief that God is, is in this. He's, he's at work right now. Biblical meek, meekness becomes real in our lives when you and I wholeheartedly believe that God is for you and he's not against you. And then because you trust him, you can commit your ways to him. We, we can roll our anxieties onto him, our frustrations, our plans, our relationship, our job and our health. And we say, God, I don't know what's going on, but I trust you. I, I, I give this to you. You're God. You're, you're on the throne. You have not vacated that spot. Biblical meekness begins with trusting God. Secondly, the meek commit their way to God. They commit their way to God. It's not, not just this intellectual insight, you know, or assent to say, oh, yeah, okay, God's good. But actually commit my way to God. 
And, and, and this, you, you know where this begins? This, admit, this is where I come and I admit, God, I'm insufficient <laughs> apart from you. I, I, I need your grace. I need your mercy. Uh, I, I need you with the complexities and the pressures and the obstacles that I face this week. Lord, guide, guide me. Guide me with your strength and your authority. Three, maybe you were doing really well till now. <laughs> the meek wait for God. The meek wait for God. Now, this doesn't mean that the meek are lazy. It simply means they're, they're free of frenzy. The, the meek have a, a steady calmness that comes from knowing um, and, and trusting God and knowing that, that God is good, God is all-knowing, and God is all-powerful. And, if, and, and if, if all those things are true, I, I can wait on him. I don't like the way this feels. I don't like the way this looks. But I can wait on you, God. I, I, can, I can trust in you that you have this. And, and here, here's the reality that maybe you forgot this one. I need to remind myself in this from time to time. He's God. You and I are not. You know, he's, he's in control. And, and, and here's, the, here's the thing. Be, be, because you're, you're going to wait on God and, and you're going to have strength and patience that, that he gives you or you're going to live in a frenzy. And, and, and maybe there's been moments where you've done that or you've seen people. Let me give you, I'll just fire these out for, for characteristics of people living in a frenzy. We run ourselves into the ground. You know, because we're, okay, what, what's going to happen next? What's, what, what's going to hear? You know, what am, what am I going to do? What if this happens? What if, you know, uh, Secondly, you're in a frenzy, you shut people out. We, we, stop, we stop doing this. We, we stop, stop connecting. Uh, third thing, you focus only on the negative. It's a hundred good things going on, focusing on this one negative and, and, and forward, forget about God. All right, let, me, let, me go, let me go back to the characteristics of meekness because those, aren't, those were not like suggestions to do. This, this one is. Um, for the meek do not fume or fret over the wicked's success. Go, go back in there. Read verses 7 and, and 8. Uh, they, they refrain from acting on their anger. Actually, Proverbs tells us that a fool vents his, his full anger. Um, and, and those that are meek, that they don't do that. Why? Because they are patiently waiting on God's power. In God's provision, God's timing to make things right. Th think about the old, uh, in the Old Testament. Remember Joseph, this guy. He's, he's got some lovely brothers. Uh, they, you know, whatever they they take them, they throw them in this dry well. I don't know if that's better than a wet well. Probably worse. Anyways, they throw them in this well. That's not a good idea. Let's sell them into slavery. That's a better idea. This this is getting you know from bad to worse. But. But, but he's in slavery. He has this horrible, long, drawn-out drawn uh, journey in, in, in Egypt that, that was not great. Not, not, not great by any stretch of imagination. But then Joseph, who patiently waits on God, rises up to number two in power. <coughs> and then what does he do when, when his brothers come? He could have destroyed his brothers. He, 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 could have, he could have ruined their lives. He could have taken their lives. And, and what does he do? He exercises grace. He chooses to bless them. He, he chooses to forgive them. Is Joseph weak? Not by any stretch of the imagination. Joseph is a, is a powerful man. Here's what Joseph did. He maintained controlled strength in the midst of uncontrollable circumstances. Meekness is a journey. It's not a destination. Right? And, the, and the reality, who does meekness most sound like out of, out of all the people you know of throughout history? Jesus. Jesus. The most powerful person on the planet who could have said, you know what, enough's enough. Those legions of angels I talked about, boom, here they are. Most powerful person. Strength under control. 
willingly went to a cross for you and I. Willingly died for my sins, for your sins. Willingly died to set a world that is wrong right. If we, if we want to know what meekness is, we want to be meek, follow Jesus. Follow his example. Here's the question. Tomorrow you're going to get dressed physically. My question is, what are you going to put on spiritually? Will you put on meekness? Will you put on the clothing of righteousness that Christ provides? Let me close this in, in a word of prayer. Father God, we're thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ who demonstrated meekness, who in this strange plan through surrender to you, surrender to what looks like everything wrong made everything right. And Father, those that, that hear my voice that do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray that today would be the day that they say, Lord, I invite you into my life. Thankful that you died for my sins and my salvation. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I seek to follow you all the days of my life. And that they, would, the rest of us, would say, and Lord, we seek to put on the clothing that you have provided for, for us. We will walk in your righteousness. Father, again, we are so thankful for you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So we're going we're gonna to close out here. Okay. You can, you can do that, yeah. How, what time is it? Let's close out. We're going we're gonna to close out with a, with a song. My hope is built on nothing less. Obviously not that song. <laughs> you, can, you can do it short if you want.
sing that to him right now. serve the Lord. Looking forward to seeing you guys back here next week. So glad to have you in God's presence with worshiping with us.